in the business and the business uh, earns more and more profits through these customers. And also, when we are talking of customers, naturally there are other businesses also supplying the same customers or serving the same customers. And who are these? They are our competitors. Competitors are other organizations that are producing the same goods that we are producing. Rivalry between competitor is usually the most serious force facing managers. High levels of rivalry often means lower prices. Profits become hard to find. Barriers to entry keep new competitors out and result from economies of scale, cost advantages due to large scale production, brand loyalty, customers prefer a given product. Now, while talking of competitors, the manager has to appreciate that this is the most serious part of business because smart competitors can outbid us and sometimes they can push us out of the business or at least they can threaten our profits. Uh, how do we compete? There are a number of strategies using economies of scale, introducing new technologies uh, by having a smarter, more well-trained human resource, having uh, good training programs and uh, also motivating our own employees and serving our uh, customers better. That is, again, as I said, we have to have customers' satisfaction. So these are the factors which help us compete in the market. And the manager has to uh, take note of the fact that this is a very important pass part of task environment as the competitors are also using all these tactics all the time. So this is a matter of uh, competition of the smartness of managers. And from here we come to industry life cycle because the role of sellers, the role of suppliers, buyers, customers and competitors all vary during various phases of a business. A business has a life cycle, it starts, then it grows, it attains maturity and a shake off period also and then sometimes it may decline sooner or later. So these uh, business phases, life cycle phases have the problems related to the customers, suppliers, distributors, and also the competitors. Industrial life cycle reflects the changes that take place in an industry over time. Birth stage, firms seek to develop a winning technology, VHS versus Betamax in video, or 8-track versus cassette in audio. Growth stage. Product gains custom acceptance and grows rapidly. New firms enter industry, production improves, and distributors emerge. Shakeout stage. At end of growth, there is a slowing customer demand. Competitor rivalry increases, prices fall. Least efficient firms fail and leave industry. Maturity stage. Most customers have bought the product, growth is slow. Relationships with suppliers and distributors become more stable. Usually, industry dominated by a few large firms. Decline stage. Falling demand for the product. Prices fall. Weaker firms leave the industry. Life cycle of industry is important for the manager to note because he must be conscious of the changing environment in the each phase of life cycle. The beginning phase or the birth of a business has different environment and has different challenges in the market and from competitors and from the new technology upon which the manager is trying to base the business. 
in the growth phase, the manager has to have strategies of exploring new markets and uh, creating more and more uh, customers and uh, keeping them satisfied through uh, well in time supplies and fulfilling the orders. Similarly, at uh, shake off stage when the industry has attained a certain growth level, the manager has to be creative to think of new ways of introducing new product designs and new brands and also creating brand loyalty among the customers. In the decline phase, it is all the more necessary that the manager be an innovative and creative person so that either he can check the decline or he can again bring it to a plateau. That is what we call the shake off stage. And in the end stage, maybe the manager has to think of a new industry or a new business based on new technology and start the life cycle over again. From the task environment, which is comprised of factors that are directly related to business, we come to general environment, which is not so directly, but which may be far more effective on the business. It has great, it may have greater impact on the business. And these are the wide forces of uh, a country or a region, which may be affecting the overall business. Now, what is this general environment and what are its factors? The general environment consists of wide economic, technological, and demographic and similar issues. Managers usually cannot impact or control these. Forces have profound impact on the firm. Economic forces affect the national economy and all organization, includes interest rate changes, unemployment rates, and economic growth. When there is a strong economy, people have more money to spend on goods and services. The general environment, as the word shows, is general. That is, it is very broad and spread over a country or a whole region. Sometimes we have uh, pacts with other countries, thus opening up uh, opportunities of new business. Sometimes we have ban on certain imports, thus closing our uh, ways to introduce new products and sometimes we have to stop production also due to these factors. Similarly, there may be uh, raised interest levels and thus the business will suffer because we will not be getting uh, loans from banks which will be very costly. And uh, similarly, there are other factors. There may be a boom which will affect positively and the smart managers will avail of the opportunities to explore new markets, to create new customers and to have uh, growing corporate uh, strategies. And uh, there may be some times when we have a slump and the overall business activity goes down and there is less buying and selling uh, overall thus affecting the business and its profits. Now, similar are the effects of uh, technological changes and socio-cultural changes. Technological forces are the skills and equipment that are used in design, production and distribution. Results in new opportunities or threats to managers. They often make products obsolete very quickly and can change how we manage. Social cultural forces. It results from changes in the social or national culture of society. Social structure refers to the relationships between people and groups. Different societies have vastly different social structures. National culture includes the values that criti national culture includes the values that characterize a society. Values and norms differ widely throughout the world 
and these forces differ between cultures and over time. Technology is something very basic to modern times and modern business. Rather, all production depends upon technology and day in and day out, new technologies and new techniques, even new tools and implements and instruments are coming. And on the one hand, we have to have more and more training periods for the employees to make them well conversant with the new technologies. On the other hand, a manager has to be on the lookout for cost effective new technologies so that he can use these. For example, introduction of constant velocity gadgets in motor cars in early 80s proved very successful for the uh, vehicle industry. Similarly, the introduction of uh, ballpoint pen turned redundant fountain pens. Similarly, introduction of laser in uh, uh, medical technology also brought refined methods of surgery and thus turned old surgical instruments obsolete in certain cases. And there are a number of other examples in which one can see that the change in technologies or rising of new technologies can help the managers and also the managers who are not quick enough to leave the obsolete technology may suffer and uh, their production may not remain cost effective. Cultural changes, of course, are uh, effective in our market because as the culture changes, as we can see in fabric designing, the cultures have their own fabrics, but cultural changes also bring the changes and those changes have to be adopted by the designers. Similarly, in filmmaking, in book production and in other uh, industries also, the culture affects all sorts of designs and uh, therefore the business managers have to be wary of all these factors and uh, respond to the cultural changes also to make their business successful and more profitable. The last point is the effect of demographic forces on the task environment. Demographic forces are the changes in nature, composition and diversity of a population. These include gender, age, ethnic origin, etc. For example, during the past 20 years, women have entered the workforce in increasing numbers. Currently, most industrial countries are aging. This will change the opportunities for firms competing in these areas. A new demand for healthcare, assisting living can be forecast. Demographic forces relate to populations and they relate to gender balance in populations, age groups or the relative strength of age groups in populations and also the regional concentrations of various populations. Sometimes they are there are changing demographic forces due to mass migrations or internally displaced persons as it happened in certain countries uh, when there were big earthquakes or the floods. So these naturally affect markets and uh, the managers have to note what sort of changes are coming in the population. They have to note it with reference to their needs of manpower also because the structure of human resource is different in the countries where the population is aging and there are less young people and they have to use immigrants as workers. Sometimes in some countries there is a great population of youth so the productivity uh, related to uh, certain industries increases and the 
training needs of the populations also increase. As regards gender, we can